We're going to go through the steps of replacing the fuel pump in this 2002 Chrysler Town & Country today. First, we want to bleed the pressure off the system. We can do this by bleeding the pressure through our relief valve on our pressure gauge. Always catch any fuel that you may bleed off the system and dispose of properly. We will now disconnect the negative battery cable in order to start the repair. Anytime you have a battery cable that is corroded, before reinstalling it, be sure and clean the terminal and the cable. We will now have to remove the shield in order to gain access to the fuel filler hose and vent line. We will disconnect the vent line and loosen the clamp on the fuel filler hose. We will remove the hose as we lower the tank. Now we'll disconnect the main fuel line. Note that there may be some residual pressure at this point. Be sure and capture any fuel in a safe container. At this point, we're ready to lower the fuel tank. We have a static ground that's attached to it that goes over to the fuel filter. We need to be sure and disconnect it so we can reattach it later. And now we should be ready to lower the tank. Keep in mind, that the filler hose is still attached, so as we lower it, we'll have to remove that. We have to remove these emissions tubes. They actually run through the frame support. Now that we have it partially lowered, we'll disconnect the electrical connection, making sure to slide the safety retainer over and to the right. In order to keep debris from getting into the tank, we need to clean it with mild detergent and water. Now that we've cleaned the outside of the tank, we need to remove the fuel lines, which are a pinch type connector again. We will need to remove the retainer in order to reuse it on the new module. Remove the fuel filter. The fuel filter will have fuel in it and we will need to capture that. It is always recommended that we replace the fuel filter at any time we change a fuel pump. The original equipment fuel pump had two line fittings and a cap. On the new Airtex fuel pump, the cap will not be needed. Remove the tank lock ring by using our non-ferrous brass punch and rotating it counterclockwise. Now that we've got the locking ring removed, we remove the pump module. This is a plastic module type assembly and the lower portion of this will have fuel in it. We need to be sure and safely capture that. We remove the tank seal, set it off to the side. We will not be reusing that. As we can see, there is some contaminants built up on the strainer. Even if your fuel pump strainer does not show these signs, we always recommend cleaning the inside of the tank. In with the pump, we have a couple tank seals. Be sure and choose the appropriate one for your application. Slide it into the tank, noting the arm not to bend it or just form it. This is a spring-loaded assembly. As we put it in, we're going to compress that spring slightly. On the top flange, you'll note this locating tab. It will set between these two retainers on top of the tank. Once we have the pump installed, now we'll install our locking ring. We'll have to keep a little pressure on the module assembly as we're compressing the spring. Start the locking ring in place, and now we'll take our non-ferrous brass punch and turn the locking ring clockwise to completely install it. Install our new fuel filter. There we are, ready to go back into the vehicle. As we go up with the tank, we need to insert the vent hose through the frame port. We also need to start our fuel filler hose. Reinstall the fuel line going to the engine. Connect the electrical connector. Slide the safety retainer into position. And install our tank strap. Tighten the hose clamp on the filler hose. Reinstall the emissions tubes and reinstall the shield around the emissions tubes. There is a static ground strap. You need to be sure and reposition it on the tank strap. Now we can reconnect the negative battery cable. We can cycle the key two to three times to charge the system. Always be sure and monitor the fuel pressure once you start the vehicle to make sure it's within vehicle specification. 
To remove the gauge, we'll shut the engine off and bleed the pressure from the system using the pressure relief on the gauge, making sure to capture any fuel in a safe container.